This is the solution to WEC012. Okay, so for part uh, for part A, the first step of making a slope chart is to find the domain of the function. So the domain of H. Uh, the reminder uh, here is uh, to help you with this first step. Uh, so the thing, uh, the the thing that you need to remember about this is that uh, even radicals even radicals uh, so for example like fourth root of x have domain x greater than or equal to zero, whereas uh, odd radicals like fifth root of x have domain uh, all reals. So then uh, the reminder is that uh, this fractional exponent uh, actually means uh, an expression involving radicals. So h of x is equal to negative 9 multiplied by x and then plus 2 ninths. And now, in terms of uh, radicals, this would be square root of 3x minus 5, and then that all cubed, because uh, square root is second radical, and then plus 13, like so. So when it's written this way, uh, you can see that uh, because of this radical there's going to be a restriction in the in the domain so uh, for this one this term right here gives uh, no restriction so that one's all reals uh, the 13 that's just a constant so that one's fine but uh, what we need for this one is we need uh, that we need it to be uh, greater than or equal to zero in order to satisfy the requirements of a even radical. So that would be, um, we need to solve three times x minus five greater or equal to zero. So that is uh, three times x greater or equal to five. So that is x <coughs> greater or equal to five thirds. Uh, written in interval notation, that's five thirds to infinity, and then written uh, as a plot, that would look like this. So five thirds, and then everything uh, five thirds and to the right. So that's the domain. Uh, now. We need to find the critical points of h. So you can uh, have a look at the key for 0, 1, 1 uh, to remind you that there's two kinds of critical points and what those are about. Uh, we want to know where h prime of x is undefined or zero. Uh, in either case we'll need the derivative. So h prime of x is uh, negative 9 is the derivative of the first term and then now I'm just going to write uh, plus plus. 
derivative of uh, two ninths. Two ninths, yeah, two ninths. Three times x minus five to three halves, and then plus zero. So I already differentiated the first term and the last term. Okay, so uh, what makes this exercise different than 0, 1, 1 uh, is that uh, the main difference is that uh, this one requires this domain consideration and uh, it also requires the use of the chain rule. Okay, uh, to calculate the derivative. So this would be negative 9 and then plus 2 ninths. So that 2 ninths just hangs out because the derivative is homogeneous. Uh, then for the chain rule, this would be 3 halves multiplied by 3x minus 5 to 3 halves minus 1. Well, 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. And then for the chain rule, uh, we'd have to multiply by the derivative of 3x minus 5. So that bit there is the chain rule. A little bit more work here, so then negative 9, and then the 2's cancel, and then uh, 3 over 9 cancels so that we get 1 third, and then I'll write 3x minus 5 to fractional exponent half as square root, so that'll be square root 3 times x minus 5, and then multiplied by 3. Uh, so the derivative of h is uh, <coughs> negative 9. Uh, then this 3 and that 3 cancel. So negative 9 plus uh, square root 3 times x minus 5. Okay, so that's... Uh, fairly simple uh, representation of the derivative. <coughs> so now, uh, notice that uh, because the original function had this square root in it, and so does h prime, uh, that means that uh, h prime is defined everywhere. And of course, that everywhere means everywhere on uh, H's domain. So that is to say, everywhere the original function is defined, uh, the derivative is defined. So that means that there's no, no critical points of the undefined variety. So now let's solve. Uh, h prime of x equal to 0. Well, that would uh, be the same as solving uh, 9 equal to the square root of 3x minus 5. So we can move the radical to the other side so that this is 9 squared. Is 3x minus 5? Well, that's uh, 81, and then adding 5, uh, that would be 86, is 3x. So 81 plus 5 is 86. Okay, so this would be uh, 14 over 3 is x. Okay, so there's just, uh, just one critical point. Uh, where the derivative is uh, 0, so there's a horizontal tangent there. Alright, so now let's make the slope chart. The slope chart, uh, that doesn't really get, uh, can't be made algebraically any nicer, so I won't attempt to. Uh, we need to plot uh, the domain, <coughs> so
So the domain is from uh, 5 thirds onwards. So I'll just uh, erase this part. And then there's a critical point at 14 thirds. So 5 thirds is less than 14 thirds. So I'll mark this right here. 14 thirds. Uh, so 5 thirds, 14 thirds, 12 thirds is in here. So 12 thirds. Of course, 12 thirds is 4. And then uh, 15 thirds is over here, and that's 5. So those will be the points. Uh, that I plug in. So, uh, plugging that into the uh, into H prime there. Uh, H prime of four. That would be uh, negative nine plus the square root of well, 3 times 4, 3 times 4 is 12, uh, minus 5 is uh, 7, so square root of 7. And uh, square root of 7 <coughs> is, uh, well, it's uh, less than 9 at any rate, so this uh, quantity is negative. So that's negative. So is negative. As a result, uh, we can write the decreasing symbol. <coughs> then, uh, in the next region, uh, we're going to evaluate h prime at 5. Well, again, that would be negative 9. And then plus. Uh, the square root of uh, 3 times 5 is 15, minus 5 is 10, so that'd be square root 10. And again, the square root of 10 is less than 9, so this is negative. <coughs> so that's negative. Uh, then, for part B, uh, all we need to do is uh, interpret this uh, result. So uh, either one of these answers would be fine. So you could say that uh, it is decreasing on uh, 5 thirds, uh, 5 thirds to 14 thirds. Uh, union. Uh, 14 thirds to infinity, uh, or you could say the the whole thing. So, or five thirds to infinity. And again, just a technical note here is that uh, in this kind of question, when we're asking about uh, the intervals where it's increasing or decreasing, uh, we're always looking for the open intervals. part C. Uh, in this case, the answer would be none. That is to say, there are no intervals where uh, it is increasing. And then uh, on part D, uh, again, because uh, it never switches from increasing to decreasing or vice versa, uh, that means that uh, there are no local extrema. So local mins, None. Local maxes. None. And uh, in case you're wondering how this could uh, possibly occur, uh, what's happening is that uh, this uh, this thing here is a uh, 
sloping down, <coughs> and uh, it slopes down at a you know relatively quick rate. So this is uh, going down this term right here in a big way. So this first term is like uh, decreasing a lot. And then this second term is increasing a little. Uh, but the thing is, is that uh, the, the downward slope of this term by itself uh, is so much more than uh, the upward slope of this one that uh, it the 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 summing them together you can never get the function to slope up at all so it is like uh, it's like this term wins the battle for uh, decreasing versus increasing so it's uh, decreasing all the time